So we're uh, in the summer in the Psalms. Uh, I'm going to be in Psalm 32 today. And growing up, if I ever did, um, <laughs> but when I was younger, my mom would always say, hey, you need to go clean your room. And I knew what that meant. I knew what she meant by it, but I knew what that meant, what I was going to do. So I would be like, okay, so I've got to clear some space under my bed. All the bottle, water bottles or whatever was under there. I was, yeah, it was a mess. Maybe, maybe the closet or hide things. Or you, you ever have a rug that was just heaping in the middle? No, just me? Okay. Looks clean, looks clean. Look, kids don't clean well. I didn't clean well then. Um, we have, sometimes we have our kids help us clean and then we come behind them and help them finish cleaning. But it was like everything that was lost is now found. Things that were lost in my room, they were surprisingly just found when everything had a place. That's why Donna labels everything. So here's the thing. Then I got married. And my cleaning versus my wife's cleaning is completely different. Thanks, Bob. All the husbands in the room. Amen. Amen. So I'll go through and think I've got things clean. And then Sarah's like, no, okay. She, <laughs> she has to come alongside there is a surface level cleaning that I think, okay, that's just that's great. But then there's a deep level cleaning that happens when she cleans. And I come home and everything's moved. Everything's picked up. swapped. You know how it is. I don't need to go through this. But there is a wholeness to her cleaning and there's a surface level to mine somewhat. But I believe this morning that there is a depth to the cleaning that God does in our lives when we make space for him to work. Now, my question for you this morning is, is are you going to make some space for him to work this morning? Because you have to do it. You have to make that space in this, this, these next few minutes. Will you make space for God to, to work in your life? You see, we all know that we've sinned. We've missed the mark that God set for us in our thoughts and our words and our, our actions. But I'm so thankful for 1 John 1, 9. But if we confess our sins to him, he is faithful and just to forgive us our sins and to cleanse us from all wickedness. Forgive is to, to send away, to get rid of the trash, things that shouldn't be there. Do you have anything in your life this morning that doesn't need to be there? Some trash that needs to go. And the cleanse there, to cleanse us from all wickedness, unrighteousness, to cleanse us to be made clean. So it's not just getting rid of the trash, it's a deep cleaning. That this verse is talking about. He is faithful and just to forgive us and to cleanse us. If we know Jesus we have, and have found forgiveness and freedom in Christ, can I tell you something this morning? Your sin is not your story. Your sin is not your story. And if you've not found that relationship, today is the day. Pastor Rick said it. Today is the day. And your sin does not have to be your story. Psalm 32 Starts like this. Oh, what joy for those whose disobedience is forgiven, whose sin is put out of sight. Yes, what joy for those whose record the Lord has cleared of guilt, whose lives are lived in complete honesty. When I refused to confess my sin, my body wasted away I, and I groaned all day long. Day and night, your hand of discipline was heavy on me. My strength evaporated like water in the summer heat. Finally, finally, I confessed my, all my sins to you and stopped trying to hide my guilt. I said to myself, I will confess my rebellion to the Lord and you forgave me. All my guilt is gone. How much? All. Ooh. How much? All. We'll come back to that in a minute. All my guilt is gone. Therefore, let the godly pray to you while there is still time that they may not drown in the floodwaters of judgment. For you are my hiding place. You protect me from trouble. You surround me with songs of victory. The Lord says, I will guide you along the best pathway for your life. I will advise you and watch over you. Do not be like a senseless horse or mule that needs a bit and bridle to keep it under control. Many sorrows come to the wicked, but unfailing love surrounds those who trust, who trust the Lord. So rejoice in the Lord and be glad all you who obey him. Shout for joy all you whose hearts are pure. Can I share this morning that there is more than just forgiveness 
when we come to Jesus and he forgives us, there is more than just forgiveness. It doesn't just stop at forgiveness. There is freedom. There is freedom. There's freedom from guilt. We just read it. Verse 2, it says, Yes, what joy for those whose record the Lord has cleared of guilt. Who has been cleared of guilt. Now, we have this thing happening in our world, and you can be for it or against it. I'm not going to talk about whatever that is, but AI is, going, is just exploding. Now, there are some things that you used to say, well, if you, if you can see it, you can hear it, then we, we took people at their word of what we could see. Here's the thing. I heard a Johnny Cash song, and he wasn't singing a Johnny Cash song. It was some weird, like, I don't, even, I don't ever want to hear it again. But he, it was a song that he had no business singing. It was like Johnny Cash singing Taylor Swift. There's some weird, it was nasty. But can I tell you something this morning? You have to know that you too can't trust all that you feel. All the weight that the enemy wants you to carry around. All the the burden of, of past sins. All the things that you've messed up and done in the past. That's not what God wants for you. You can't trust that. I can, I, I, I can tell you where I was sitting. Pastor Dean was teaching a Sunday school class. I, I hadn't been here maybe six months. And he was teaching on, on 1 John in chapter 3. And he read these words to me. I, I grew up in, in a church where, where we were motivated by guilt a lot. Anybody else go on a lot of guilt trips through their youth? Yeah. In church? <laughs> and I never really had this verse hit me until I was there. I was in my 30s. It says this, starting in verse 19, Our actions will show that we belong to the truth. So we will be confident when we stand before God. Verse 20. So 1 John 3.20 is where I want to hit. Even if we feel guilty, God is greater than our feelings. And he knows everything. Even if we feel guilty, God is greater than our feelings. And he knows everything. Friends, and this is verse 21. Dear friends, if we don't feel guilty, then we can come to God with bold confidence. And we will receive from him what we ask Because we obey him and do the things that please him. Do you believe this morning that God is greater than your feelings? Do you live like that? That God is greater than your guilt. That God is greater than your frustration. That God is greater than all of the things that you're facing. Because there's not just forgiveness found at the cross. There is freedom found in the cross. Freedom from guilt. It's there. If you are feeling guilty today, you need to give it up. You need to give it up. You need to get, but, but I, this is just how I was raised. I've always just, I, I, was, I was doing a, a lesson one time with youth group, and I, and I talked about this guilt, dra- this guilt jacket that, that we just walk around, and all this, every once in a while we feel bad about something, so we just put it back on, and we just wear it around. It, it's just the guilt that we wear. If that's you this morning, I'm telling you there is freedom from that guilt. There's also freedom from the power of sin. Verses 3 and 4 and 5 talk about what sin does to us. It says, when I refused to confess my sin, my body wasted away and I groaned all day long. Day and night, your hand of discipline was heavy upon me. My strength evaporated like water in the summer heat. And then it says, finally, I confessed all my sins to you and stopped trying to hide my guilt. Stop trying to hide my guilt. Are you trying to hide your guilt this morning? God's greater than it. He's greater than, than, than anything that you're going to feel bad about. And he, he's bigger than your feelings. And I know some, some, we have some big feelings when it comes to guilt. I should have done this. I, I shouldn't have done that. I messed up in the past. You don't know. You don't know. I don't know. You're right. God does. And guess what? He's greater than your guilt. What, is, what kind of power does sin hold over you? He says it, in, in this passage in verse 3, it says, My body wasted away and I groaned all day long. Some of you are like, well, I'm, I'm fine. I'm fine. I, I, I don't, I'm not grumpy at home. I don't have a bad attitude. I'm not, I, don't have a short, I don't have a short temper. I don't have all these things. Because here's the thing. When sin starts creeping in, it, it affects us in so many different areas. And we, we, we just deny it. And we're like, no, I just had a bad day at work. When really our heart's in the wrong place. When really we need to come back to God and say, God, would you search me today because I'm not doing what I need to do. But some of us don't do that. We just, we just think, oh, just, I just had one. 
There is freedom from guilt. There's freedom from the power of sin that he can hold over us. And there's freedom, there's courage to live in Christ even when we live with the consequences of our sin. We know that, that there are plenty of things that happen when we sin and step out of what God wants for us. Relationships die. Trust is broken. Our freedom sometimes taken away. All of these things happen. And when we come to Christ, we, we would be foolish to think that there aren't still consequences and things that still happen because we've messed up. God just doesn't sprinkle his fairy dust and say, poof. That's not how it works. So what we need is courage to live in Christ even while we are living with the consequences of our sin. Courage not to, to not allow your story to be about what you've been forgiven of, but about the one doing the forgiving. Is your story about all you've done? I did this and I did that and I walked through this and I had this. Or is it God saved me? Amen. That God is good all the time. Amen. That he took me, I don't know where this song came from. Talk about old songs that pop up. Remember the song that had, the, uh, uh, he brought me out of the, the miry, miry pit or the miry clay. Still don't know what miry means, but somebody can tell me later. It's what we grew up with. That he brought me out. He brought me out. And we had better not be floating back in and think, oh, what's this? You know, I'm just, we had better not be allow sin to have a hold on us and because we can be forgiven and, and the consequences can drag us back. We're like, well, I'm just so bad. You know, I, I, I thought I asked God to forgive me, but I still have to deal with the consequence. Yes, we do. You need some courage to stay there and realize that, yes, it's going to happen. But he says this in verse 8. I'm sorry, let's back up. In verse 7. When those things happen, it says what? That God is our hiding place. He's our hiding place. He protects us from trouble. And he surrounds me with songs of victory. He surrounds me. When was the last time you felt like God surrounded you with the song of victory? For me, I think it was sitting back there and the joy that was in this room. I just felt just the, the absolute sheer presence of God and the joy in that moment. Some of you have been surrounded with songs of defeat for too long. You've been singing them to yourself. Oh, I'm just a sinner saved by grace. Oh, I'm, you don't know what I've done, but I'm, I'm not where I need to be. I'm, you know the whole, You know all of them. We need the courage to live in Christ and to live with him singing over us and allow those songs to be much louder than the songs that we keep playing and that we can hear. Because our sin is not our story because sin is only part of your story until it isn't. When you allow God to start writing your story of faith and forgiveness, he starts that deep clean in our hearts and our souls and our minds and our strength. Church, your testimony isn't about your sin. When you give your testimony, it's not, well, I was, all these things. It's about the forgiveness that you found in Jesus. Your testimony is that you found forgiveness. Your testimony isn't about being perfect. And it's not about how, isn't about how imperfect you've been. It's about how God has given you a new heart. And he's saying, I acted like a fool before I met Jesus. And sometimes I still trip up and mess up. But guess what? I'm a different person. He's made me new and he is making me new. Your testimony isn't about that you've been doing all the right things at all the right times and all the right places. It isn't about how you've been living such a Christian lifestyle and how you've been a good person. Your testimony is that your righteousness doesn't come from you. You being right with God doesn't come from you. Your righteousness comes from what Jesus did on the cross. Philippians 3, starting verse 7, says, I once thought these things were valuable, but now I consider them worthless because of what Christ has done. Yes, everything else is worthless when compared with the infinite value of knowing Christ Jesus, my Lord. For his sake, I have discarded everything else, counting it all as garbage so that I could gain Christ and become one with him. I no longer count on my what? My own righteousness through obeying the law. Rather, I become righteous through faith in Christ, for God's way of making us right with himself depends on faith. How is your faith this morning? It's not your righteousness, it's God's righteousness, and that's your testimony. All the good things that you could do, 
Christian living books, they're great. Seminars, it's great because they help us to be on the right track and, and heading towards God. And they sharpen us. All of these things, they're not bad. All the VBS that you've signed up for. I, I bet some of you have done like 25 or 30, maybe even more VBSs in your life. You think about that? If anybody in here has done 52 VBS, that's a whole year of your life spent at VBS. I know, it's crazy. It's not about all the tie-dyes that you've done and that you'll never wear again until Donna pulls this VBS out in 2030. <laughs> Those things do not make you righteous. When you've come to the Father and ask him for forgiveness through Jesus, then we receive God's righteousness because Jesus already did the work. You can't earn it, but also don't go on the flip side and be so negative about yourself and your past and act like you're the prodigal son heading to the Father. Can I say this this morning? We have to be very careful. We have to be very careful that we, we don't become prodigal Christians. Where you remember the story that Jesus was telling about the prodigal son and, and, and he messed up and on, on, on his way back, he had to be reciting all the things he was going to say. God, I've messed up. I wasted so much. I wasted so many years. That was his story. What's your story? Oh, God. I was mean. I was vindictive. I was angry all the time. I didn't care about other people. Oh, whatever that... But the question I, I want to ask you is, are you a prodigal Christian and heading to the Father? Say, God, I messed up. And this is your daily record that you keep playing. I struggle with this sin. I'm awful. I'm no good. I'm a terrible Christian. I don't pray as well as this person. I don't read my Bible like that person. I can't sing as good as this person. I can't teach like that person. I can't do any of these things. Oh, but, I, but God, I love you. Here I am. Oh, I can't get up here and dance like joy. I don't want to. I don't want to. You don't want me to. When Jesus told the story of the prodigal son, he wanted you to understand the heart of the father, both at the point of forgiveness, but also that your past is covered and you don't have to live in what you used to be. You don't have to live with what you aren't right now or what you don't think you'll ever be. Don't fall into the trap of forgiveness guilt. Be like, Pastor Andy, you don't know what I've done. You don't know who I've hurt. You don't know all the consequences that I'd have to live with if I, if I, said, if I asked God to forgive me. No way God could forgive me. And there's no way I would deserve it. Well, you're wrong and you're right. God can forgive you and we will never deserve that kindness. Just like the prodigal son, you are forgiven. You can be forgiven. The father's arms are open wide this morning. He loves you. He can take away your guilt. And the residue that the enemy wants you to be reminded of so often doesn't have to stay there. It doesn't have to stay there. He said, well, I'm just staying here because I feel guilty and I'm going to do all these things to make sure I don't feel guilty because I've done all this stuff. No, 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 no. God says that he wants, he, he can take the, he's greater than our guilt. I'm pretty sure. Let's go back and read that again. Yes, what joys for those whose record the Lord has cleared of guilt. He's wiped it away. It's covered. It's not there. So are you guilty over things that God has already forgiven? Are you holding on to things that he's already covered with the blood of Jesus Christ and said, I forgive you? Because you've made that, that moment, you've had that moment. Church, that is wasting so much time and energy and spiritual time, spiritual energy. If you have all the guilt that you're carrying around, there is freedom and forgiveness, true forgiveness found in the person of Jesus Christ. Jesus said in John 14, he said, I am the way and the truth and the life. No one comes to the Father except through me. I don't think the narrow way is narrow because it's small. I think it's narrow because Jesus is the only door. 
And when we look for forgiveness and, and freedom from our guilt and freedom from our conscience and freedom from and all these other things, it, we're never going to find it because Jesus is the only door that we can walk through to find true forgiveness. Because I believe if you found Jesus, you found forgiveness. Now live in it. There is freedom in forgiveness. That freedom places God in his goodness and his mercy and his peace and his grace at the center of your story. See, I think so, so often we get tricked into this thing. Well, well, well the center of my story was that I, I, I was a sinner, but now I'm not. Yeah, that, you're not wrong, but it's that my story is that I've been forgiven. And I don't have to live in that guilt. Verse 7 says, for you are my hiding place. He's our hiding place. He protects us and surrounds us. When we live forgiven, God surrounds our lives. We have to live a life. We have to live. Be careful that we don't live like this senseless horse or mule that runs out from our hiding place of what God longs for us to be. And I think when we live in guilt, that's, that's what we're doing. That's exactly what we're doing. Your sins... That you've been forgiven of are not your story. The sin that you may have in your life this morning that you need to find forgiveness of today doesn't have to continue to be part of your story. Oh, what joy for those whose disobedience is forgiven, whose sin is put out of sight, who is covered up. Their sin is covered up. It's gone. Yes, what joy for those whose record the Lord has cleared of guilt, whose lives are lived in complete honesty. I'm not sure who wrote this, but they said, sometimes we're so ashamed of ourselves that we actually feel like Jesus is too. Sometimes we're so ashamed of ourselves that we automatically feel like Jesus is too. But he's not, church. He knew you'd struggle. He knew you'd make some wrong decisions. He knew that you'd go through rough places. And he still chose the cross. Don't run from him this morning. Run to him. When I was growing up, I, I, I referenced it a little bit before, but um, there was a lot of guilt trips. We used to have this thing. We don't, we don't do it all the time anymore. We do, we've done a couple. But we used to have these things called altar calls. And Rick hit that. He didn't even know I was going to do this. He hit the, the, the nail on the head when he was talking about there is something not, not sacred. Not, I mean, you, could, you, could bow, you can bend your knee at your bed. It doesn't really matter. But when we bow on our knee, when we come up and, and make this, this, this declaration that, God, I need you to wash me and cleanse me. There's, there's, there's something that God just does that, that, that sets up an Ebenezer. So we're up to this point that God has helped me up to this point. He has forgiven me. We can make a point. Well, growing up, it was just always guilt. And I don't want that to happen this morning. I'm going to have Cindy come up and just, just um, uh, play a little on the piano. I'm going to give you some space. I talked about space today for God to work. And I don't want you to come up here if you, if you think, well, Pastor Andy said something about me and he made me feel guilty. That's not what this is about. Romans 2, 4 says this. Don't you see how wonderfully kind, tolerant, and patient God is with you? Does this mean nothing to you? Can't you see that his kindness is intended to turn you from your sin? It's not me. It's not my sermon. Nothing special about this. There, but there is something special about the cross. There is something special about Jesus. There is something special about finding forgiveness. And we can have that assurance, that blessed assurance that we sang about, that Jesus is is mine. We can have that assurance this morning that our sins have been forgiven. So if you need forgiven, regardless of what it is, in a few moments, I'm just going to give some space. I invite you to come pray. You come pray and I'm, we're going to have our staff that will come alongside and others that, that would know you or want to come up and pray that our staff just come along and pray over you. And we don't need to know what it is. I don't even want you to say what it is, except to God. Find it in the simplest of ways, saying, God, I've sinned. I need your forgiveness. Create in me a clean heart today. Do a deep cleaning. Create in me a clean heart today. And we read that he's faithful and just and will forgive us of our sins and cleanse us. He'll forgive us and cleanse us.
So that's the first one. Come today. Second one. For some of you, you need to find some freedom and and need to be freed from guilt that you've been carrying around. It gets heavy. It gets really heavy. The guilt that you carry around. And I'm telling you, Scripture tells us that God doesn't want you to carry it around. So why are you carrying it around? You don't have to prove anything to anybody. You don't have to you don't have to prove your righteousness by carrying your guilt around. Some of you have been forgiven, but you're still holding on to all the stuff that God said is finished. I've forgiven you of. Some of you are holding on to things that you've been holding on for years. For years. Because that's what you thought. You thought, I'm supposed to feel this way. I'm supposed to feel guilty. God is greater than your guilt this morning. There's times when I have to go to him too because I'm like, God, I, I need you to take my guilt. This guilt that I feel is not from you. It's, it's from whatever it is, from whatever circumstance. If that's you this morning, I invite you to come and simply ask our God, who is greater than your guilt, to remind you that it's his righteousness that we live under. It is what Jesus did on the cross that sets us free from sin and sets us free from guilt. Your prayer is simple. God, be greater than my guilt. My sin is not my story. She's going to play. I'm going to open the altars. We're not going to take very long. But I want to give you this space this morning. And then after that, I'll pray for us and the band will come. If that's you, you need to find some forgiveness. I invite you. Come up and say, God, would you cleanse me? If you need to let God have your guilt, would you come up and pray, God, you're greater than my guilt. It's your space.